My shovel crunched into something solid. Skull, probably? No biggie. It happens all the time on digs like this. Except this one ain't smiling like the usual grinning ghouls we unearth. This one is flat out pissed. Darius, our resident walking encyclopedia of local creepy legends, leans in, his breath fogging the plastic over his spectacles. Careful, lad, croaks, voice raspy like an old crow. You just woke a hungry one. Darius is all about theatrics. Vampires in the sewers, banshees in the bell tower, the usual spiel. Hungry for what? Stories? I jab my thumb at the skull. This guy ain't exactly chatty. Darius's eyes narrow. Stories, he hisses, are more powerful than you think, lad. Especially the ones buried here. He gestures around at the desolate moor, shrouded in perpetual fog, dotted with moss-covered mounds and crumbling monoliths. This ain't just any graveyard, you see. Great history lesson. Just what I need after a ten-hour shift of scraping mud. I tune him out, focusing on the cold wind that seems to whisper past the monoliths, carrying the faint scent of damp earth and something else, metallic, almost bloody. Suddenly, a wrench skitters across the muddy ground, landing at my feet like a startled rabbit. I stare at it, then back at Darius, who just shrugs, his wiry beard twitching, See, they don't like being disturbed. I bend down to pick it up, but before I can, a shadow flickers behind a monolith. My heart jumps. Did you see that? Darius squints. See what, lad? A shadow, I insist, grabbing a flashlight. He shakes his head. Just the fog playing tricks on your tired eyes. You should head back, lad. Sun setting, and these old stones don't like darkness. Maybe he's right. Maybe it is just the fog, fueled by my overactive imagination. But as I pack up my tools, a low moan echoes from deep within the burial mound, sending shivers down my spine. See? Darius mutters, a hint of something unsettling in his voice. Hungry now, aren't they? He walks off towards his tent, muttering about ancient rituals and appeasement offerings. I watch him go, unease gnawing at me. Darius might be all bark and no bite, but the night feels different. The fog seems thicker, the shadows deeper, and the wind carries whispers that sound suspiciously like voices. My flashlight flickers, then dies. Cursing under my breath, I fumble for spares. Panic flutters in my chest, fueled by the darkness and the unsettling feeling of being watched. Hello? I call out, my voice thin and reedy. Anybody there? Only the moan answers. Closer this time, followed by the unmistakable sound of something heavy scraping against stone. My blood runs cold. This ain't Darius playing tricks. This is something else entirely. Panic clawed at my throat. My breath hitched like a stuck record, each inhale filled with the metallic tang of fear. My hands fumbled, desperate for the comforting weight of a flashlight. My pockets were empty. Darkness pressed in, thick and suffocating. The whispers echoed again, closer now, laced with a guttural hunger that sent shivers down my spine. My eyes strained to adjust, searching for any hint of movement, any glint of light. Suddenly, a cold hand clamped over my mouth, muffling my scream, adrenaline spiked turning my legs to jelly. I struggled, flailing blindly, but the hand held firm, its grip surprisingly strong. A voice, raspy and ancient, hissed in my ear, Quiet, lad, don't wake the stones. Darius. Relief washed over me, momentarily eclipsing the terror. Darius, thank God. Where's your light? Lost it, he grunted, releasing me, 
but these old eyes can see in the dark better than any flashlight. We stood in silence, my heart hammering against my ribs. The whispers continued, circling us like hungry wolves. What was that? I whispered, voice trembling. Those voices, Darius sighed. The spirits of the stones, lad, disturbed by our digging, angered by the silence of their stories. Stories. Now it wasn't the time for Darius's history lectures. So what? They gonna haunt us to death? Worse, he muttered, his voice tight. They feed on stories, lad. Forgotten memories, lost voices. And right now, they're famished. My blood ran cold. So what do we do? Tell them bedtime stories, he chuckled. A dry, humorless sound. Not exactly. There's an old ritual. Before he could finish, the ground trembled. A monolith, massive and moss-covered, groaned, shifting as if straining against its ancient slumber. Panic choked me. We gotta get out of here! I shouted, shoving past Darius. But he grabbed my arm, his grip surprisingly strong. Wait, he hissed. The ritual. It might appease them. Appeasing hungry spirits with a ritual in the middle of nowhere. Not my idea of a good time. But the tremoring monolith argued against escape. With trembling hands, Darius rummaged in his back, muttering under his breath. He pulled out a worn leather pouch and a handful of strange objects. Feathers, stones, bones. Each radiating an unsettling energy. What are you doing? I whispered, fear choking my words. Honoring the dead, he replied, his voice oddly calm. He started chanting, words ancient and guttural, echoing through the fog. Around us, the shadows writhed the whispers turning into anguished wails. The tremors intensified, the monolith creaking in protest. I squeezed my eyes shut, bracing for the worst, then silence. I opened my eyes slowly. The fog seemed to thin, the oppressive weight lifting. Darius finished his chant, tucking the objects back into his pouch. He turned to me, a wry smile laying on his lips, Seems they like the bedtime stories, lad. Relief washed over me, leaving me weak and shaky. Maybe the spirits were just hungry for a good yarn. Maybe Darius wasn't entirely crazy after all. But as we walked back to camp, the unsettling feeling lingered. What stories had Darius told them, and were they truly satisfied or merely biding their time, waiting for the next chapter in their macabre tale? Dawn crawled across the moor painting the monoliths in an eerie orange glow. I stood by the excavation site, shovel abandoned, watching Darius fiddle with a strange contraption made of twine and feathers. What exactly are you doing? I asked, my voice rough from the night's terror. Darius glanced up, eyes glinting with something unsettling, honoring the stones, lad, ensuring their hunger remains sated. His words sent shivers down my spine. Sated? After their little temper tantrum last night, he chuckled, a dry, hollow sound. No, lad. They were merely expressing their discontent. Discontent. Understatement of the year. But I didn't push it. Darius's brand of history mixed with the supernatural wasn't exactly my cup of tea. Still, the unease wouldn't settle. The night's events played on repeat in my mind. The whispers, the tremors, the feeling of unseen eyes watching... Had Darius's ritual truly appeased the spirits, or merely postponed their hunger? As if reading my thoughts, Darius tapped the twine contraption. Feathers rustled, emitting a soft, mournful tune. This little device, he explained, amplifies the whispers of the stones, helps me understand their needs. Needs? Now he was just making me creeped out. And what exactly do they need? His smile stretched too wide teeth glinting in the dawn light. More stories, lad. More voices. And they're willing to offer something valuable in return. My gut churned. What could possibly be valuable enough to warrant a deal with vengeful spirits? 
Darius's eyes gleamed with a strange light. Knowledge, lad. Ancient secrets whispered through the stones. Secrets beyond her wildest dreams, I stared at him, unsure if he was crazy or just strangely persuasive. The promise of secrets was tempting, but the thought of bargaining with hungry spirits made me want to run. Just then, a figure emerged from the mist, the foreman looking pale and shaken. Ethan, he stammered, did you hear that chanting last night? And the tremors, his fear mirrored my own. I glanced at Darius, his smile widening further. This wasn't good. This wasn't good at all. My head throbbed with indecision. Could I trust Darius? Could I trust the whispering stones? What choice did I even have? The foreman's voice cut through my thoughts. We need to shut down this site. This is clearly cursed. Darius's smile vanished, replaced by a cold fury. No, lad, this is opportunity, a chance to tap into something powerful. He turned to the foreman, his voice low and dangerous. Leave, if you must, but know this. The voices of the stones will not be silenced, and their stories will be heard. The foreman stumbled back, fear etched on his face. He fled the sight, leaving me alone with Darius and his unsettling whispers. As the sun rose higher, bathing the moor in an unsettling yellow glow, I knew I was at a crossroads. Could I walk away, leaving the mysteries and dangers buried beneath the stones? Or would I be lured by the promise of ancient secrets, forever bound to the hungry whispers of the hungry stones? The choice, I realized with a sinking heart, wasn't mine alone. The spirits, it seemed, had other plans. The weeks that followed blurred into a feverish haze of digging, deciphering, and dread. Darius, fueled by an unsettling obsession, became increasingly erratic. His obsession with the hungry stones consumed him, and I, caught in his web, couldn't escape. As promised, strange whispers filled the air, weaving tales of forgotten lives and ancient rituals. Darius transcribed them with manic fervor, muttering about lost powers and forbidden knowledge. The stories were captivating, terrifying, and undeniably addictive. But the Hungry Stones weren't satisfied with just stories. They craved more. My unease morphed into full-blown fear as Darius started offering them sacrifices. Small trinkets at first, then unearthed artifacts each offering met with unsettling silence, followed by renewed hunger. The final straw came with a blood-stained bone necklace Darius unearthed. Holding it aloft, he chanted in a language that scraped against my sanity. The ground trembled, the monoliths groaned, and a chilling laughter echoed through the fog. That night I couldn't sleep. Every rustle of wind sounded like vengeful whispers, every shadow flickered with unseen eyes. Fear gnawed at me, urging me to flee. But what about the crew? What about the potential danger Darius? In his twisted quest, unleashed, dawn painted the sky in an ominous red, mirroring the unease churning in my gut. The crew arrived, their faces etched with apprehension. Their fear was justified. Darius, eyes wild and bloodshot, stood before the excavation site, chanting in an unnerving tone. He didn't see me approaching, my steps muffled by the fog. Suddenly, the chanting stopped. Darius let out a blood-curdling scream, collapsing as if struck by an unseen hand. Chaos erupted. Workers fled, screaming about ghosts and demons. I rushed to Darius. Fear warring with the knowledge he brought this upon himself, he lay gasping, clutching the bone necklace. They betrayed me, he rasped, voice raspy with terror. They want more stories forever. His words echoed in my head as cold tendrils of fear wrapped around me. The hungry stones weren't appeased. They wanted more, and Darius's greed had painted a target on every soul here. With a ragged breath, I made a decision. Darius brought this curse, but the crew's lives shouldn't pay the price. I grabbed the bone necklace, 
the whispers intensifying like a swarm of angry bees. Enough, I shouted, my voice hoarse but resolute. I'll give you your stories, but leave them alone. The ground rumbled, the fog swirling in response. My heart hammered against my ribs. I held the necklace high, fear fueling my defiance. Then, silence. The fog thinned, revealing the monoliths standing stoic and still. The whispers receded, replaced by an unsettling quiet. Had it worked, I couldn't wait to find out. Turning to the terrified crew, I knew what I had to do. Arius paid the price for his greed, but the danger wasn't over. It was time to bury the secrets, seal the excavation, and pray the hungry stones had finally heard enough. The future remained uncertain, shrouded in an uneasy silence. But as I walked away from the site, leaving the chilling memories and unsettling whispers behind, I knew one thing for sure. Some stories are best left untold, some secrets better left buried. The hungry stones might have been silenced for now, but their hunger I feared remained, waiting for the next chapter to unfold.